Each week, American History TV's Real America brings you archival films that provide context for today's public affairs issues. No longer would light, heat, and power have to originate at the points where they were to be used. They could be delivered by wire from central power stations. For electricity, as Benjamin Franklin knew, was heat and power, as well as light. Many other pioneers already saw the power possibilities, and they were developing a device called the electric motor. Here was the strength of men's backs, the muscles of their animals, and the power of the water wheel in one package. Now there were companies manufacturing something that no one had ever made and sold before. They were manufacturing the most versatile power of all time, electric power, and delivering it through wires no bigger than your fingers. Here was courage to build and grow, but courage also to back progress up with cash. A pioneering spirit on the part of people everywhere, the bank cashier, the harness maker, the shoe clerk, the school teacher, the ordinary everyday people who invested their savings and gave the young power industry strength to expand. They, the share owners, as much as the inventors and engineers, brought about a great revolution when a world that had plodded down the centuries suddenly found out how to use a force that had waited to go to work since before the daybreak of history. This successful transformation of raw sewage into clear, clean effluent is accomplished in a specially built, a specially equipped, and efficiently operated plants that have been developed largely within the past 50 years. There were only 60 such plants in 1900. By 1910, there were 300. Their numbers grew until by 1945, there were over 6,000 plants in use. But at the same time, thousands of other communities were installing sewers for the first time and turning their untreated wastes into our waterways. So today, our public health service officials estimate that there is a pressing need now for more than 10,000 new plants. And in addition, a large number of the existing plants are inadequate. This great need for efficient sewage treatment exists in almost every community. So long as we ignore this need, Pollution will menace health, rob us of food, reduce property values, take away outdoor pleasures, destroy wildlife. And add greatly to the difficulty and cost of providing safe city water supplies. Already today, she's used some 87 petroleum products including the plastic bacon wrapper and the wax of the milk carton. She'll top a hundred before the day is over. Mrs. Martin is the customer, and the customer is the boss of the oil industry. This Tuesday's daylight is almost gone. Electric power stations are getting ready for the hour of peak load. That sudden increase in the demand for service which comes with the dark. Even though the old oil lamp is a thing of the past, oil still helps light up America. Clear skies, clean air. That's what it's all about. We've thrown tons of filth to the winds, blackened our skies, burned our eyes, polluted the air we breathe. Now we search for ways to end our folly. Natural gas? The statistics are impressive. 
carbon monoxide, oxides of nitrogen, hydrocarbons, reduced by nearly 90%. Lead and smoke eliminated completely. Natural gas, clean and practical for those taxi and delivery truck fleets that produce 35% of the vehicle pollution in our cities. Natural gas. The final answer? That's hard to say. In some states, supplies are limited, but scientists say there is more beneath the ground if we want it. And who is to say what solutions the automobile industry will adopt in coming years? The final answer to the problem of automobile pollution may lie somewhere in the future. But while the work and the talk goes on, perhaps there is a place for natural gas and the dual fuel cars now. Clear skies, clean air. That's what it's all about. <laughs>